congenital experiences as well, and anybody who's been in a trade union. What's the working classes are busy working. That's what they do, right? Unfortunately, the chattering classes are busy not working. <coughs> And so they tend to dominate the organisations that working people are in, in times of, of quietness. Mm -hmm. Now, the working classes are going to move on to the stage now. But Margaret Thatcher were right, there is no alternative. Every union official will tell you they would rather win a dispute by writing a letter. Yes. They would rather do that. <laughs> Nobody likes the hard work. He, anybody who likes going on strike has never <coughs> done the hard work. It is extremely stressful, it's extremely hard, and it puts tremendous stress on families, but people who are now unions haven't done it. They don't know about doing it. They think it's some sort of discussion where you end up agreeing on, agreeing or not agreeing with the bosses about what's going to happen to your members. Every meeting you go into when you've been on the shop floor, you know, the, the problem in Rochdale for Gordon Brown, I'll tell you now the most people I know weren't bothered about what the woman said to Brown or Brown's reaction. They were bothered that he couldn't talk to working people because that's what shop stewards do every day of their life. If you can't talk to a 66 year old care worker in Rochdale, what chance have you got in front of 100 bin men or 100 gardeners or 100 sewage workers? You will be eaten alive. And that is the issue. The rank and file have to come because only them are capable of representing people. And there is a sea of people, and Jerry touched on it, there are a sea of people on very good wages and very good conditions who are appointed, who aren't elected, who are watching this election very closely. Because the one thing that them people disagree with is elections. They absolutely hate them. And stewards don't hate them. That's the world they live in. You, you know, so if you have an argument one night, you go back to work the next day, you're gone as a steward. You can be gone. And they don't want to live in that world. And part of my campaign about that, and part of my workers' wage, is regular elections of all officials. Mm -hmm. Which is one of the things that AU we do, we've got a proud record on regular election of officials. And we've got to return to it. If you're going to get a good job that has good con let's be clear on this, the final point, let's be absolutely clear on it. It's not a question of getting a good wage representing working people. Most shop stewards lose money and time. They do. They lose their career. Yes. They lose their family life. They lose money. They lose opportunity. They don't go on holiday. And they suddenly wake up one morning and the kids are adults. That's what happens to shop stewards. And that's the two choices the members have got. They get somebody of them to represent them. Or the political class will try to prevent that from happening. And let's be absolutely clear, I like using this point because it cheers me up, on the Russian billionaire ship, right, on the Russian billionaire ship, when there was Osborne there and Mandelson the other year, you want to know what it was really about. What it was really about was Mandelson wishes he were rich, rich enough to be on that ship. <laughs> And Osborne is rich enough and wants you to convince that he ain't rich enough to be on that ship. That's the only difference between them. And for these candidates in this election, it's not about that. I don't mix with people like that. I mix with ordinary working people. I, it's like Tommy Cooper used to say, I like kids, I used to be one. Well, I am a working person and that's who I want to represent. And I want to walk into the pub or the library or the cinema face those people and say, your terms and conditions are the same now as they were three years ago. We did that, that's what it's about, and that's what the people who earn the big books don't want it to be about, because they're very all right, thank you very much. <laughs> At the moment, we've had to sit and watch the Ant Deck show. Mm -hmm. The only difference was, it was the Ant and Deck of the upper classes, the public school boys deciding where the cuts were gonna be, and that's taken its toll now, and the bankers have decided how the country's going to be run. The secret meetings have taken place, and the cuts will start. And that's the deal, really. And if anybody wants to know what the deal was before the election, they should have seen Derek Atman on the Andrew O'Neill show, when the normal comfy loving disappeared, when Portillo said, look, he said, we all know that nobody supports British Airways workers, no passengers support British Airways workers. And Hatton says, the sort of people you know might not support British Airways workers, the ones that go first class to New York, but ordinary working people do support them. And, and Portillo said, look, working people in this country, and he gave the game away, working people in this country have to understand that all their conditions have to be cut in the next 12 months. 
And I think that's the theme of the next 12 months. That's the theme that's followed the general election. It's the first general election I've ever been involved in where nobody promised anything. They were all desperate to, make, to clarify that they weren't promising anything. And we got the situation, I was in my house the week and a, a, a coal miner came around to see me. And I said to him, he's not a coal miner anymore, he's been in his early 40s. And I said to him, uh, Dick, did you watch the leadership debate? And he says, Paul, I'm not a prat. He said, I'm going to vote for him, I don't want to bloody listen to him. <laughs> and, 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 and it's the truth. It's what working people did in the general election. What, if you study the results, if you absolutely study the results, they were returned to class politics in voting methods. That's what they were. The results in London were completely ignored in England, Scotland and Wales. But the fact of the matter is we've returned now to an early 70s situation where the government, the leading party government, has one parliamentary seat in the, in the second biggest country in the Union, in Scotland. And I watched the most amusing programme on the television where I can't remember which town in Scotland they were in, but the, the reporter said, I thought it was the 1983 general election. Every door you knock on, they just say, I'm bloody eight, that's you. <laughs> well, and, 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 and it's the truth. I, the best election poster I saw wasn't drawn up by some fancy company in London. The best election poster I saw were a cardboard box in a window in Wakefield that somebody had cut up and painted in red paint. If you're thinking of voting Tory, I've only three things to say to you. Thatcher, Tebbit and Ridley. That's all I've got to say. And that was an absolutely clear message to people. And that's what happened. And I think that election could have been won easily. The fact of the matter is, did some, anybody want to win that general election is another debate. And we've got the situation now in Britain where a part nationalised bank that you and I have paid for, the Royal Bank of Scotland, paid 16, million, 16 people a £1 million pound bonus each and paid 16,800 an average bonus of £77,000 in the same month they announced in the Midstaff's NHS Trust People had died 13 years into a Labour government, 60 years after the formation of the National Health Service. People had died of neglect in a National Health Service hospital. Old people. And it's absolute disgrace. And I've told this story before, but I like it, so I'll tell it again. I went to a meeting of, of uh, road diggers, that's what they would call themselves, hole diggers, road maintenance workers in Huddersfield the other week in February, an absolute criticism every night in the paper, too many potholes, not clearing snow, roads are a disgrace. And this lad stood up at the back of the meeting, was a hole digger, and he said to me, Paul, I can sort the potholes out in Kirkley's council tomorrow. He says, put a banker in every hole. <laughs> he says, the skins are so thick, you won't have to repair them holes for a hundred years. And that's the truth of the matter, because working people in this country, working people in this country, have suddenly become the problem. Working people who did nothing. What is the reality about what's going on? What is the themes? Well, the first theme is proportional representation is what I've always said it was, a loser's chapter. It's for those who think they can't win elections. It's for those who don't want representation. If you look at the European parliamentary elections, nobody knows who they've elected, nobody knows who their MPs, and nobody knows who's accountable to them. It's a loser's chapter. And we've had the situation now where Clegg is the eternal bridesmaid at uh, bride going around looking for a groom who doesn't want to be a groom. That's what happened for a fortnight period. And the banker said there's going to be a run on the money. You've got to decide what the outcome of the situation is. And I remind everybody in this room that if we'd have had proportional representation in this country, UKIP would have won 20 seats, the BNP would have won 12 seats, and Plaid Cymru would have won no seats. That is the representation that they want to talk about. And we would have had a situation where people say to us, you've got to have tactical voting. Where has tactical voting taken people of Britain? It's taken <coughs> into not voting for the party of the class that they should be represented by. It's taken them down an avenue of somehow thinking that if you live in Somerset, you live in Cornwall, you live in the southeast of England, there's some advantage for you voting for another capitalist party other than the Tory party. And there's no advantage whatsoever for ordinary working people. And people don't hate the Labour Party. People hate the Labour government. They absolutely hate it with a vengeance because it represents nothing I know about. I grew up in an era, and I tried to explain this to some people who went to university and studied politics. When you knocked on the street where I came from, people didn't say they voted Labour. They never gave that answer. They said, I am Labour. That's what I am. I, what are you in this house? Do you vote Labour? No, 